so we're going to be using the dodge tool which is underneath the burn tool looks like a lollipop or a little circle on a stick the dodge tool will do the same thing as the burn tool but instead of adding darker color in it'll give you some slightly lighter color like you can see I did here on the face you can also lighten up a little bit of the chest area and put some highlights going down onto the arms etc. So they work in tandem together. You would use one and then use the other one. I'm just going to point out you can always change the shape of your brush tool. Right now we're using this fuzzy edged brush but right up here I just clicked where it said brush and I dropped down the arrow there. You can change the diameter of the brush to make it a little bit smaller if there's a more concentrated area that you want to work in or you can make it bigger if you're working in a larger area. Okay, so when I did the skin layer, what I did is I made a background copy. I'm going to go ahead and rename that. I'm just going to click on that, and we're going to call it skin. So we know that that's the layer that the skin is on. And I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to go back to my background layer again, and I'm going to duplicate the layer and I'm just going to drag it up and I'm going to rename this one clothing so that I know this is going to be the clothing layer and again we're going to go ahead and change that layer to multiply so that we can see through to the layer that's underneath it and I'm going to start to fill in uh, the pants and the top with some color now you have two options for this. You can use you know, flat color. We can pick from the color picker here. Let's pick like a nice purple color. Maybe that. I like purple. That's my favorite color. And we can go ahead and fill in the different areas with that color. And then maybe pick a slightly brighter color for there we go my two favorite colors uh, a slightly different color for the shading on that band there okay so we did that and let's put a pants color in there what color should we make the pants let's get a little wild and crazy here well maybe not so wild and crazy let's do maybe like a khaki color probably going to be too close to her skin. Mm, yeah, let's do that. There we go. Okay. So we have this nice bright top and a sort of muted, uh, muted pant with that. So now I can shade this using the burn and dodge tools the exact same way that I did the skin. So I'm going to come back over to here. I'm going to grab the burn tool. Right now our exposure is set at 30%. We're in mid-tones. And again, you can do the same thing and start to color in some of the areas using the burn and dodge tool. This one, I think we might have to go to shadows for that since it's a relatively dark color. There we go. So you're going to start to see some of the edges start to shade up a little bit and you can keep working that this I might actually change to 50 percent so we can shade that a little bit darker there you go and again this is only going to work on the layer that I've put the color on it's not going to work on any other layer and then here's the dodge tool So you can see I'm highlighting in certain areas there. And over here we can do some lightness to sort of show how that's blousing in there. So you have a couple of different options. I'm not a fan of the way that looks, but you have a couple of different options for doing that. Now the one thing you can also do is you can use a pattern in here. So what I'm going to do is I am going to 
actually delete this layer. So I'm highlighted on the clothing layer right now. I'm going to hit the trash can and it's going to delete that layer. It's still going to leave the skin because the skin was there. I'm going to make it a new layer again. So I'm going to duplicate my background layer, drag it up on top, change the overlay to multiply, and I'm going to show you how to make a selection and how to fill it in with pattern. All right, over here, one, two, three, fourth tool down is something that kind of looks like a lollipop, but it has like sparkles coming off of it. That's the magic wand tool. And it truly is a magic wand because it's a selection tool that allows you to select certain areas. So if I go ahead and I click that and I put it in one of the areas that I want to fill in, you'll see that I get the, whoa, man, see, the selection marquee around it. I'm going to go back to the normal mode on that one. Nope, we got to change our tolerance on this, I think. So when you're in here, what you want to do is you make sh sure that your tolerance is set to around 20 or 30 and that contiguous is checked. So I'm going to go ahead in here and I'm going to click in that one area. Now to add more than one area to it, say I wanted to fill this whole top with a pattern or a specific color, you're going to hold down the shift key and you'll notice that the magic wand gets a little plus added to it. That's so you can add into your selection. Now I'm going to come up here to the edit menu and I'm going to go edit, fill, and it's going to say to me, okay, what do you want to fill it with? So I'm going to use a pattern and then there's custom patterns in here. So there's all kinds of different patterns you can use. I have these very cool plaids that I made. So I'm going to go ahead and pick one of those plaids and I'm going to click OK to fill it in. And you'll see it's gone ahead and it has filled in my selection with a plaid. Now you can fill this in with any pattern that you want, anything that you have, anything. All right. Now you notice we have the little marquee tool, little marquee marching ants around it. I'm going to hit Command D to deselect. The other thing you could do is go to select and deselect in there, but it shows you what the shortcut is. Okay? We can do the same thing with the pants if we wanted to. We we'll use the magic wand tool again and just click them. And because they're all in this one uh, area, I can go ahead and edit, fill, and then let's pick a different pattern. Uh, it's going to look really horrible, but let's pick this pink and black plaid. Okay, and I'm going to click OK. And into there is going to go that quite obnoxious looking pink and black plaid. It doesn't really go with the lovely uh, seafoam green and blue plaid that's up there. But again, that's how you can fill in an area with a pattern like that. Okay, and then these will behave the same way and you can shade them with the burn and dodge tools um, and highlight them the same way. I'm going to change again my uh, layer to multiply and there you go. Now you have some of your see-through pattern in there and it would continue on in the same way. You would now take uh, your background layer, copy it again, make a layer for the hair, take the background layer, copy it again, maybe make a layer for the shoes, anything along those lines. So you have an opportunity to do a lot of different things with this one particular croquis. Now when you're finished and you're ready to save, say I've, I've gone in and I've done all I'm going to do to this particular croquis, when you go to save, you're going to go to file and then you're going to click save as because you don't want to save over your original sort of untouched croquis. You want to save it as a new file. So you're going to go to save as and it's going to ask me what do you want to save it as. I'm going to call this croquis plaid 1. Um, and this is a PSD file. PSD stands for Photoshop document. This, when you save it as a Photoshop document, will preserve everything that you have going on. All the layers, all the different things that you've done to it. If you save it as anything other than a PSD document, it will most likely flatten it and you will lose the ability to edit things in individual layers. So I'm going to leave this as a Photoshop document. I'm going to click Save 
and it's going to save it, click OK, it's going to save it as a PSD. So if I go to open this again, I will have all of this information and all of the layers preserved and everything like that, and I could go back in and, and work on them. Say I wanted to change this layer or delete it, I can do a whole bunch of different things to it. So this is the basics for opening up your croquis, getting them colored in, adding some shadows and highlights, and then how to save them.